स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया welcome students in today's class and in this week uh, specifically we are going to talk about initial and boundary value problems so essentially in the, uh, the properties of uh, those problems so essentially uh, let me put it by writing it like this initial uh, and boundary value problem okay so essentially uh, what it means is for uh, heat equation uh, you see if i am writing it like this so the equation is this ut minus laplacian of u equals to f hmm? that is in gamma omega t omega t as you guys already know it is omega cross open zero t closed okay and t is positive of course it's given to us t is positive and uh, u that is equals to g g is some continuous function on gamma t gamma t is what this is the parabolic boundary right and um, so this is the parabolic boundary i hope you all of you remember what uh, parabolic boundary is uh, so essentially um, what it means is that is let me write it properly what this means it will make it more clear u of x0 this is equals to g of x Okay, or g of x zero essentially. Uh, this holds for all x in omega. Okay, and so on the you know the baseline x equals to zero and uh, you know sorry t equals to zero on this line t equals to zero and the bottom part uh, u of x zero is g of x zero and u of x t. Uh, so this is the bottom part. bottom part and u of x t is g of x t okay u of x t is g of x t this holds for all x in the boundary of omega and t between open zero t close clear so this uh, part is the vertical part vertical sides vertical sides right okay so that's the property given to us i want to study um, the mean value property for this problem okay let's say that let's call it to one so uh let's say for this problem what i mean by this is let's say uh, the question boils down to this let uh, u in c21 omega t or i mean for now you can just assume it is continuous in omega t uh, solves one solves one okay now uh, can we have a mean value property like laplacian like a laplacian okay that's the question so essentially the question is this if you have so you remember in laplacian what does it uh, laplace equation when we did okay so just a small recall let's just to the uh, here recall so laplace equation what it did uh, what we did is this we saw we to i mean we saw that if let's say you have a continuous function in omega ha huh? u is a continuous function in omega and it satisfies this equation so u of x okay uh, less than uh, so this is equals to uh, the mean value of u um, over the ball let's say ball b x r uh, u of y dy and of course you can also have the boundary okay let me write it down so this is del b x r uh, u of y okay dy so this is equals to this and which is equals to let's say uh, so yeah uh, it's fine so this is the mean value okay of u okay this is the mean value of u so essentially what it is saying is uh, i mean uh, if you want to calculate the value of u at the point x you just look at the mean value of u uh, in the ball surrounding x okay so uh, that that is going to give u x and this is if and only condition right so if u is in continuous and u x is uh, looks like this that will imply that u is harmonic okay u is harmonic and uh, vice versa if u is harmonic then of course u x uh, will look like this okay so that we saw 
now here whenever we say mean value property so this is a exclusive property so uh, i mean let's uh, look at this thing let's put it like this so, so small note uh, i mean uh, note is this uh, um, you has to be you see um, any harmonic function for uh, for laplacian u equals to 0 okay um, any you satisfying this thing so essentially you see mean value property is an exclusive property of a laplace equation that is what i am trying to say so maybe i can put it this way okay uh, for uh, okay a mean value property let me write it put in this way mean value property is an exclusive property exclusive exclusive property of uh, the laplace equation laplace equation okay so when i say exclusive property what do i mean and what is the mean value property i mean i mean this the uh, you know the average of u over balls these balls these are the every i mean the usual balls which we talk about in rn right our euclidean ball b x r right now the question is this so here whenever in heat equation whenever we say mean value property what do i mean by that because we know that the the harmonic functions are the only functions for which mean value property can hold so essentially here there is a small thing which we should look at is this see uh, that uh, uh, let's say that uh, so uh, a small observation let's say observation observation okay so this is let's say that uh, y is in um, bxr huh? bxr or the, uh, on the boundary i mean it does not matter here whatever uh, what we are doing here so uh, okay so uh, sorry if y is on the bound on the ball b a of x r is in the ball b of x r okay or on boundary so all of this is also true for when we are doing for the boundary okay going for the boundary so this will imply mod x minus y less than r right and this will imply this thing yeah and that will also imply that mod x minus y okay um whole power minus n that is less than greater than equal r power minus n okay and that this if you multiply a constant here positive constant which is more specifically 1 by n alpha n okay 1 by n n minus 2 alpha n so essentially that constant so uh, if you multiply it by 1 by n alpha n n minus 2 okay and uh, mod x minus y whole power uh, minus n minus 2 this yeah? minus 2 minus 2 this is greater than 1 by n alpha n n minus 2 r to the power minus sorry um, yeah r to the power n minus 2 okay um, n minus 2 okay so see what is happening here is this one second let me put it this way uh, n minus 2 or to your n minus 2 so what is happening is this what is this thing this is the fundamental solution for n greater than 3 i mean you can do it for n equal greater than 2 also n equals to 2 also no problem but for here, here i am just assuming n is greater than equal to 3 okay now so what is it this is the fundamental solution um, if e of x minus y this is essentially it is this set is essentially this set no 1 by n alpha n n minus 2 r power n minus 2 right see here when we want to modify our mean value property for heat equation the only modification we can do it in is in this ball right i mean other than that what ux is defined in u is the u is a function which is defined in the heat and, uh, i mean that's the solution of the heat equation or laplace equation whatever yeah see the point here is this this ball this is important this is the uh, thing which we need to modify and that is why we are looking exclusively at what is so special about this ball see if y is in the ball then the fundamental so, so for a fixed uh, of course uh, so let's say you fix a x first okay and for a fixed text if y is in the ball then the fundamental solution at the point x minus y is greater than 1 by n alpha n uh, n minus 2 at the word n minus 2, right? That is always there. And the um, great thing about this is, let's say this is on the boundary, 
Yeah, let's say this is on the boundary DLB, then the, it will be equals to right, then the equals to sign will be there, equals to sign will be there. So essentially, in that case, what can you say? You can say that, uh, so let me put it uh, this way, it will be much better. The sphere The sphere, okay, in case of Laplacian, del B XR, okay, uh, del B XR are the level sets of the fundamental solution. Fundamental solutions of the Laplace equation, right? See, uh, what I meant by this is, uh, let's say that is, uh, we look at the boundary. I mean, if you can, of course, look at the ball, I mean, interior of the ball. But for now, let's just assume it is on the boundary. If y is on the boundary, phi of x minus y is equals to this thing. Now, if you change r, let's say r equals to 1, r equals to 2. The, so, phi is equals to that particular constant, right? It will be a constant. Phi is equals to a constant. So, essentially, what that, that what does that mean? It means that if you are taking y to be on the boundary, so basically any boundary, okay uh, a boundary of a ball you can think of that okay very boundary uh, so the sphere essentially the sphere you can think of the sphere as a label set right that is what it means so essentially you see um, i mean I, I did it the other way so uh, if you have a fundamental solution phi of x minus y okay phi of uh, so, so what am i saying I am telling that if you have a fundamental solution, let's say uh, given y, let's say, uh, you, uh, sorry, fix a x and look at phi, phi of x minus y, okay. Of course, now what you are going to do is um, phi of x minus y. So, you look at the, um, if you want to find out that uh, what is the relation between this particular uh, function and the spheres yes and the spheres then you see let's say this is equals to constant okay so the level sets of phi so those are actually the uh, the spheres del b x that is what we are trying to say here huh? and that is very so that, that is what i did in the other way so you know if phi of x y equals to some constant then you understand that i mean essentially we are looking for the uh, we are aiming for the boundary okay Okay, so this is the idea behind, uh, you know, generalizing the mean value property of fundamental solution. So, what we are going to do is this. So, let's say this suggests, let me write it this way. This suggests, okay, the label sets, the label sets of the fundamental solution, of the fundamental solution, okay phi of x minus y so uh, here it is heat so x minus y and you have t minus um, i don't know maybe tau or something uh, let's just write it yes uh, we'll use it later maybe maybe used okay in case of heat equation heat equation is this clear so essentially what am i saying i am saying that uh, i mean you can think of the now look at the fundamental solution of the heat equation and look at the level sets of that huh? that will correspond to some function some set right huh? i want to look at the mean value of u over that set okay so the definition definition okay the definition is for fixed for fixed x in rn you remember we have always fixed uh, x in rn and t positive okay mm, t and r positive t positive r positive we define we define this r is basically the boundary uh, sorry the um, i mean you know in um, in laplacian we have that radius of the wall here similar kind of thing we define e of x t r this is defined by set of all those y and s in rn plus 1 okay such that s is less than equal t and capital phi 
of x minus y t minus s greater than equal 1 by r power n okay so this we are defining how we are defining this thing first thing first so what is e x t r it is the set of all those points in r n plus 1 so see here uh, i mean i am not putting any specification on what s is this can be negative please realize this thing s is s is in r y is in of course in rn right y is in rn but it is a set of all those um, y and s such that s is in r so essentially s is the only um, i mean the property which i give is s is bounded by t this has to be true right see s greater than less than equal t is uh, it's a necessary condition to define this set because uh, see, uh, otherwise this particular uh, phi will become zero, right? Because I mean, if t minus t, this particular variable is negative, then phi is zero, and we are basically look, saying that zero is greater than equal some r t or n. The set, the, that set is going to be empty. We don't want that. Huh? So s is of course bounded by t, but the thing here is s can be negative. See, s is in r. Huh? So this is what I, we are choosing. This is the set. And where are we are getting this thing? Phi is greater than or equal to 1 by r power n. So this is just a motivation of that uh, thing. See, um, in Laplace equation also phi is greater than or equal to 1 by, um, so um, the level sets, right? Okay, 1 by r power n minus 2 kind of thing. Here it is coming. Huh? So in this case, we are just assuming, uh, we are just uh, saying that this is greater than or equal to 1 by r power n. Okay, so, so the, the, uh, the fundamental solution okay so so that is the same kind of idea the same kind of motivation here see here this is not given anywhere please realize this this is from our motivation we are defining something like this yeah this is just a motivational uh, thing next thing what we are going to do is we are going to specify that such a you know definition if you define a set like that using the you know idea from laplace equation that set is uh, i mean a viable set okay and on this set you can actually talk about the mean value property okay so let's look at uh, what exactly is this thing so so property one of this set so what what is so special about this set? so this set uh, so this set e of x t r okay is called the heat ball okay is called the heat ball clear okay and uh, and is a region in space time right it's a region in space time S space time and if you look at it can you uh, guess what is the uh, i mean uh, the boundary the boundary uh, of this particular set okay uh, space time the boundary of which of which is a label set label set of phi of x minus y t minus s okay if you remember here in case of laplacian see uh, i mean what is the boundary the boundary um, of the ball okay here in our usual ball boundary of the ball okay mm, so that is essentially the label set of uh, the fundamental solution here also the similar kind of thing is happening okay so essentially uh, i mean the boundary okay of this heat ball this we will call it a heat ball okay this is not specifically a ball huh? it will look like that it looks something like this this is the point this will be xt okay so this will be on the boundary yes this will be on the boundary uh, so see uh, the boundary of which is so essentially what am i saying i am saying that uh, the uh, i mean if you look at the level sets of the fundamental solution that is going to be the uh, i mean the boundary delhi xr okay so that is that is daily xtr okay xtr of course this is not xr xtr this is the uh, i mean 
level sets of phi of x minus y t minus s equals to some constant okay so the boundary is essentially this okay i mean you can see right for some r let's say something yeah um, r equals to 5 for something so phi is equals to 5 i mean if it is a boundary it will be equals to at that case right so phi equals to let's say 1 by 5 power n or something so yeah, that's a constant so, yeah, phi equals to constant so the you are basically looking at the boundary the level sets yeah okay so uh, that is there this is the heat ball now uh, you see note uh, there are some small things we have which we can actually uh, specify here okay so note that note that phi of x minus y t minus s is greater than equal r power minus n if the, i am writing it like this that is equivalent to saying equivalent to saying e of x t comma r is the set of all those y comma s in r n cross r such that okay i am writing some stuff here i will explain where this all of this is coming t minus r square by 4 pi okay less than equal s less than equal t and psi okay this is a new function psi this we will define later huh? x minus y times s minus t this is greater than equal 0 okay so that's your set now where what is psi where let me write it here maybe it will be better where psi is defined by this i am writing y s you can just write it in other variables also that's not a i mean it's nothing special about this variable okay see this y s has nothing to do i mean you can just change it to z some some theta or something yeah just matter doesn't matter so basically psi will look like this plus mod y square by 4 s minus n by 2 okay log minus 4 pi s log of i am not putting a mod here please remember this is so how is shy written n log r r is always positive you don't worry about it r is positive so n log r plus mod y square by 4 pi what is mod y square by 4 pi uh, i mean there is nothing to do uh, mod y square by 4 s is uh, okay okay so uh, yeah so mod y square by 4 s yeah that is fine okay minus n by 2 log of minus 4 pi s see here this is whenever i am defining something like this is already implied that s has to be negative here you see because if it is zero also it is not defined so s is negative in this case okay s is negative and that is fine you see that is fine okay uh, so essentially uh, this is the psi now we are going to um, i mean i am going to motivate how this thing and this thing is equivalent so basically um x e actually looks like this okay e looks like you can actually write rewrite e like that that's what i'm saying right now how do we rewrite this thing okay now uh, where are we? Ah, okay so how do we rewrite it okay so 1 by 4 pi let's just uh, write it phi is greater than equal um, r by n uh, r to the power n minus n okay what does that mean so this power n by 2 and e power minus x minus y square by 4 t minus s greater than r power minus n okay that is there so that will give me r power minus n is less than equals to uh, 4 pi t minus s whole power minus n by 2 right i can write it like this so essentially i am removing exponential see this exponential this is exponential minus a positive term 
t minus s is positive x minus y square is positive so exponential are positive sum okay so so i can actually bound it by one right so exponential minus x minus so what is the maximum it can take the maximum it can take is one okay sorry about the plane so this is t minus s this is um, uh, this is always less than equal to one so this is for x equals to y that is taking one okay so the maximum value of this is one so i can bound the whole thing by one so r to the power minus n is bounded by um, one okay so it is there so what does that will give what does that give me it gives me four pi t time minus s that okay is always less than equal to r square okay and that will give me t minus r square by four pi okay is less than equal to s clear Yes, so this is this is why I am coming out with this thing. See, s is always less than equal t. That is there, and it is s is uh, greater than equal t minus r square by four pi. Okay, t. So, or the other way. I mean, you can write it. Huh. Okay, s is greater than equal t minus r square by four pi. Okay, right. And we also have another property. You see, exponential minus x minus y square. By 4t minus s, the fundamental solution, the exponential part of the fundamental solution. This is greater than equal to r power minus n, um, 4 pi t minus s whole power n by 2. Right? That is true. So that if that is true, that will give me r power n is greater than equals to exponential minus x minus y square by 4t minus s. Okay. Uh, Okay, I am taking this thing there, and I am putting. Uh, one second, what am I doing? Yeah, okay, that that is fine. No, let me write it properly. So now, since this is true, uh, okay, uh, what does that mean? See, from here, I can take the uh, the logarithm, the natural log on both sides, right? Okay, once I take that, what will be there? This is n log r. If I take it here, this is n log of r, okay, minus this property n by two log of log of four pi t minus s, okay, uh, and you have minus x minus y square by four t minus s. This is greater than equal zero. Uh, i am taking log on both sides this is log of r to the power minus n plus log of this particular thing okay so i am just taking everything on the other side and uh, you have here log of this thing is minus x minus y whole square by 40 minus s so all of this if i am putting it together this is greater than equal to zero so if you if you look at it this particular thing basically is psi of x minus y t minus s is greater than equal to zero that's what it is written You see, psi of x. I see x minus y and y minus s. They, here, there is nothing special. I mean, you can write x minus. See, psi uh, is symmetric about x minus y. So basically, psi of x minus y, psi of y minus x is essentially fine. But you can't change t and s. Okay, you can't change t and s. So um, here, I wrote it like this. See, here, um, this psi. If you replace, you see here, this um, minus n by two log of minus four pi s. Is there? Let's see, uh, I can write minus four pi s minus t. Okay, uh, so this variable can be negative. Okay, so I can I will write it like this: x minus y s minus t. Huh? If you, uh, I mean, this is fine. Huh? Uh, just check one second. Just uh, take your time and check whether this part is fine or not. Please okay. Uh, so uh, you take, um, I mean, you replace these variables with uh, x minus y and s minus t, and you just check that whether what I wrote is fine or not. Okay, this is how this um, e of x t r is coming. Uh, so this is another formulation of a heat ball. Okay, now uh, let's look at some other properties. Yeah, uh, so another property of a heat ball. Property. Okay, uh, so before I move on, one small uh, you know um, thing which I want to tell you is this: there are some parts of the th proof which I am going to assume. Okay, so I am going to uh, while doing. So let me put it this way: so while doing mean well properties, some parts 
some uh, results results will be assumed okay uh, this is uh, not results from pd okay this is this is some uh, you know results from several variable characters okay so some results will be assumed and uh, some you have to check you have to check yourself check yourself okay so this is standard that's checking yourself what but the thing is i never took any results to be assumed up till now but today we are going to uh, take a small liberty and assume one pr result which is absolutely i mean which is not possible to you know do it in this class yeah so that i will assume and you got an two so okay so let's look at the property of a heat ball uh, one property is it is essentially you know a translation so you can just uh, think of heat ball as this r is um, the property xt okay so e of xt r so the heat ball around the point xt is nothing but the translation of um, a, um, i mean the unit ball 0 0 r okay the translation of the heat ball around 0 0 uh, um, by xt so you if you translate it to the xt then that will be e xt r now where where okay e of 0 0 r this is given by y s in r n cross r such that minus r square by 4 pi less than equal s less than equal 0 and mod y less than equals to root over minus 4 s in log r minus n by 2 log of minus 4 pi uh, rs Okay, now what am I getting this? I mean, I'm not getting it from anywhere. It's just a, a problem. I mean, you know, if you put e of zero zero r in this in this thing, if you just put zero zero uh, in place of x and in place of t, if you just put zero zero, you are going to get this property. I mean, this is very straightforward. Okay, so there is nothing to do. Yeah, you do not have to check also. This is fine. Don't worry about. It. Okay. So and. This you guys should check the psi, the function psi, this function psi of y s is n log r plus y square by 4 s minus n by 2 log of minus 4 pi s. This function has this beautiful property of translation. Mm, so this is uh, lambda y, lambda square s and lambda r. If you just, uh, you know, the, I mean, if, if you scale it. Uh, property of not translation scaling if you scale it with this particular scaling then that will be key, psi of y s r okay this is for every lambda positive so please check it yourself i mean it will take uh, 30 seconds at most to check it uh, no issues here so please do that okay so uh, so now that we have some idea of how the what the heat ball is i mean in this case yeah in our case what the uh, set is uh, let's write down the heat equation okay so mean value property for heat equation mean uh, value theorem for heat equation okay so what is the theorem here theorem says that let let u is in c to 1 omega t solve the heat equation solve the heat equation equation then the mean value property holds so what does that mean then okay u of x t so u at any point x t is given by 1 by 4 r power n double integral e of x t r u of y s okay mod x minus y square by t minus s square dy 
ds clear so this is uh, i mean uh, it's not exactly the kind of mean value property you do realize that that kind of property which we did in laplacian may not work here okay so here u of yx has a uh, you know friend kind of which is given by this term mod x minus y square by t minus s whole square uh, this uh, u with this thing uh, if you integrate it uh, then it is 4 r power in u of x okay again sorry about the uh, i mean the noise okay now we need to uh, so this holds so then this holds for all e of x t r which is containing omega t okay so this is what for all of that now so let us uh, look at the proof of this theorem yeah let us look at the proof of this theorem and then we will go from there okay so the proof if you remember the proof of mean value property uh, for the Laplace equation, we started out with the phi of r, right? Okay, so let's start here also. So proof is let's start define define phi of r is one by r to the power n integral xi tau in e x t r. Okay, e x t r u of xi tau okay mod x minus xi square t minus tau square okay so this is the uh, i mean function which we are defining okay this is the function which we are defining so this function is uh, of course t xi d tau that part is there okay I'm not writing. Uh, uh, anyways, I may or may not write this part. Huh? So please bear with me there. So this um, this can be written like this. No, one by r power n. Yeah. Uh, of course, there is a double integral here. If you want, you can write a double integral, or you can just write a single integral. Uh, it is up to you. I mean, if you feel comfortable, just let's just write a double integral. Huh? If you want. So let's just write. I mean, single integral is also fine. Yeah, it's not a problem. So this means that uh, double integral of xi tau in E 0 0 r. See E x t r we have written E of x t r is just a translation of E 0 0 r. So the heat ball around the origin is translated to the, the new origin is x t. So I can just write it like this. Then I can just translate this thing. Yeah. And translate this particular uh, uh, what can I say uh, function. Yeah to something like this u of x plus xi okay and t plus tau this one is mod xi square by uh, mod no, there is nothing mod here I mean mod tau square there is no mod here huh? I don't worry about the mod okay uh, tau square okay and uh, of course that um, those things are there na? okay d xi d tau that's there okay now so this is just a simple translation i'm just translating it eh? i'm quite sure you guys can um, i mean i don't have to write every single line here huh? take x minus y equals to x minus xi equals to some z or something and you can just write it like that huh? so that's that's there don't worry about it so this is equals to double integral okay uh, okay uh, by don't worry about it what i mean by this is please check this part uh, i mean this is trivial nothing to check here but uh, i mean please if you if you find that this is not uh, i mean this is not straightforward for you then please go ahead and do this okay? so this is uh, equals to xi tau um, in e 0 0 1 okay now I will explain to you why we suddenly see basically if you remember in, in the case of Laplacian also we started out with a phi of r right we defined it huh? and uh, the, after that what we did is we looked at phi prime of r and showed that phi prime is 0 right for Laplace equation here also we are going through something similar okay so 
so here uh, what we are and to do that first of all we have to you know make this function the integral independent of r if you remember in laplace also we did the exact same thing here also we are going to do the exact same thing okay so uh, so the r is 1 here if you do that then it's just a you know scaling in this variable right in the xi variable huh? so this will become x plus r xi and uh, t plus uh, r square tau okay i'm not doing anything i'm just replacing uh, so basically r um, this xi i am uh, taking i mean i am just uh, scaling it to r xi and tau i am uh, selling it to r square tau that's all okay so once i do that you see what is d xi in this case there is r, r power n xi d xi okay d xi will get converted to r power n d xi because of the jacobian part jacobian of condensation and here um, so this will be you see mod nothing will change here because xi is getting translated to uh, r xi so there is r square xi square and after that here it will be r to the power 4 xi eta square right okay so 1 by r square will be here from here and um, this property and the okay uh, am i clear here let's just write it huh? it will be otherwise you, you guys can get confused here so see here this d xi if you change here due to the, the xi is in rn so if you are changing xi to r xi there is a jacobian which is r power n d xi and from here tau is in r so this is r square d xi d tau yeah, I am sure you guys understood what is going on because of this change of variables there is this Jacobian part so that is why this r power n r square is coming r power n d xi r square d tau okay now you see this r power n and this r power n is gone okay this r square this r square r power n uh, 4 is gone so essentially we are only left out with let me I don't want to write it again because this is the same uh, thing okay mm. Okay, so let me write it this way. This is equals to this particular thing times um, d xi t tau. Clear? Okay, uh, so this is how we are going to get. So, I mean, I hope you understood what we did. This is the change of uh, change. Um, this is the um, change of variable, change of variable formula. Okay, and I am going to use this formula again and again in this part. Uh, I am not going to always explain why why this r power n and all of that is coming. I mean you understood. Huh? If you want to do it to yourself, please ch um, check it yourself anyways if you are not convinced. Okay, change of variable. Huh? But I am not going to do it uh, all the time. Uh, I think this is quite clear. Here how this is coming. I mean we, we can go back from here to here or we can come back from here to here. This same sort of calculation we are always going to do. Huh? Okay, so I urge you to please check this calculation uh, first okay so once that is true then now i want to take what my uh, you know differentiating thing so differentiating differentiating so see again uh, as i have explained to you why we are doing all of this i want to make this integral independent of one because i want to take phi prime of r if I if this integral depends on r, then we are in trouble, right? So if I'm taking phi prime of r, I can just you know take the integral inside, inside, right? The more, sorry, the derivative inside the integral. If this integral is independent of r, okay? So that that's the idea, that's the motivation behind doing all that scaling and all, okay? So differentiating, uh, we have phi prime of r that is equals to integral xi r. Uh, this in e of 0 0 1 yeah uh, so first thing first the what is the derivative of u so i have to take the derivative of this okay see this is the only uh, function which depends on r right i mean this does not depend on r so i don't have to worry about it this only depends on r so if i am taking phi prime of r by chain rule what is this this is gradient of u dot r right mm. Uh, sorry dot xi with respect to r dot xi plus uh, u of uh, t uh, times r square right that's what we are going to get okay sorry not r square 2r with respect to tau to r 
okay uh, so let me write it uh, down here so this is gradient of u at the point x plus r xi t plus r square tau okay dot xi this is the xi okay because the derivative is with respect to r in this case dot xi mod xi square by r square okay and d xi d tau okay d xi d tau plus there is another term the, because of the chain rule i have to take the derivative with respect to t also so plus ut ut at the point x plus r xi t plus r square tau mod xi square plus r and there is the, the derivative of this yeah derivative of this so this is 2r Mm, where is it? What can I write here? Maybe I can write two r. Okay, two r. So uh, that is there. Okay. Uh, of course, that uh, d z i d tau d z i d tau. Okay. I may skip this d z i d tau all the time. I am writing the exact same thing. Okay. So double integral. I mean, it does not matter double and single integral again. I am. I mean, repeating myself, but exactly the same thing. Yeah. You don't worry about all that. Sorry, this is not R. This is tau, no. Mm, this is tau, yeah. Uh, I forgot. So maybe mod xi square, not R. Tau square, huh? Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is a small mistake which I am doing. I mean, this is this is tau square. This is tau. Okay. So what I want you to do is please check this calculation. I mean, this is nothing special. I mean, the, the, the very very um, easy calculation is just a chain ruler. This is just a chain rule. Chain rule. Okay. Now, once that is true, then again by chain rule, what we can do is I can just shift this to R. Okay. Shift this to the R ball, R heat ball. So what I am saying is this, if I shift it, you see, uh, while going from R ball to one ball, you have one by R power n vanishes. So while going from the one ball to R ball, one by R power n reappears. Exactly the same sort of change of variable will work here, right? So now double integral of uh, xi tau, okay, this is not R, huh? this is tau, xi tau. And uh, in E of zero, uh, 0 and uh, r okay uh, this is gradient of u x plus uh, xi t plus tau dot xi mod xi square by tau square uh, that part is there i am not writing all that yeah, i mean that that is sorry i already wrote t xi t tau no forget about this id tau huh? because this is already there i mean always okay so that is part that part is there plus i'm i'm not writing all that this id tau huh? i'm just skipping this part so 2 by r power n plus 1 yeah this is also coming again why this is coming so this is again a change of variable huh please uh, i mean uh, uh, verify the uh, this is true i am quite sure that is not a very difficult thing to verify but please do that huh? um, because of this tau and all i mean this um, uh, th because of this property i mean if, if you break this thing uh, you know the reverse uh, change of variable then you will you are going to get 2 by r power n plus 1 again i'm really sorry about this external uh, you know flight uh, these plane noises ut of x plus xi t plus tau mod xi square by tau okay so i can write it like this and this is this clear see how am i getting this property i again i am just reversing back 1 by r power n plus 1 is because of this term ut i mean, I mean if you just reverse this part you, you can find uh, there is an extra r here so that is why that problem okay so now let us focus on this property now uh, so let's say a plus b let's define it a plus b okay this is a this is b now focusing on b 
focusing on B what we have. So on B uh, what we have is this it is 2 by r power n plus 1 okay integral xi tau in the heat ball of radius r we will call it like that there is no radius but let's just call it like r uh, called radius r okay uh, ut of x plus xi x plus xi uh, t minus t plus tau okay mod xi square by r this is equals to 4 by um, r power n plus 1 uh, integral xi tau uh, in e 0 0 r okay u t of x plus xi t plus tau uh, gradient of xi phi gradient of phi xi tau dot phi uh, dot xi okay okay now you may be wondering where am i getting all of that okay where am i getting uh, i mean it's not very difficult to see that what is gradient of uh, so since i am writing this term like that okay since gradient of uh, what do i call it phi yeah gradient of phi at the point xi tau if you calculate it this is becoming xi by 2 tau c where is phi phi is here right if you where is, i defined phi somewhere no? where, where did i define phi ah phi okay phi of y is this, this right so if you take the derivative of this thing the gradient gradient of phi you can just say that is that is going to be xi by xi by 2 tau okay the gradient of phi that's what I wrote. Where is it? Yeah, that's why. I, um, yeah, that's why I wrote. gradient of xi uh, is phi. Oh, sorry, gradient of phi at the point xi eta is phi by two tau. Okay. Right. Now, so once that is true, then uh, so let me put it uh, yeah this is fine so once that is there we have 2 by r power n plus 1 integral xi tau in uh, e 0 0 r u t of x plus uh, xi t plus tau mod xi square by r okay this property this uh, the, the function which we got earlier okay uh, this particular thing is 4 by r power n plus 1 let me again write it yeah it will become much clearer integral xi uh, eta in so this is very calculative uh, i mean uh, you know the proof of this so please bear with me here um, ut this is what we i just did in the last uh, page i just want to do it here otherwise i may get confused huh? uh, this is uh, t plus tau and uh, then i had uh, what is it uh, gradient of xi dot uh, okay uh, this this is gradient of xi at the point xi tau dot xi okay, that's what i have now this is i can write it i can write this particular thing as 4 by r power n plus 1 uh, integral or oh, double integral or single whatever i am just writing singular mm, xi eta in e 0 0 r okay and uh, see u t u solves the heat equation right so u t equals to laplace u at that point right um, so essentially this means that it is uh, 
okay we don't have to use that what we are going to do is i am going to use a different property here what i am going to do is i am going to do it like this so let's say divergence of ut x plus i okay t plus tau let me write it and then i will explain why i am writing it like this xi tau xi this particular thing minus xi of phi of xi i am sorry uh, this is there is lot of phi and tau are there so i am uh, this is gradient of ut okay at the point x plus xi t plus tau okay dot xi minus n xi of uh, phi of xi eta u t of x plus xi t plus tau okay this is there uh, yeah this is fine i think yeah. this is fine okay now let me explain to you why all of this is coming yes see if you take the divergence of this thing then first of first thing is first you have this particular thing yeah i mean you take all, so this is basically you know the leibniz property kind of thing yeah so divergence of this is first of all you take this and you take the grade, gradient of this which is this part and then you have the other two thing so basically this will be there mm, and then divergence of ut which is laplace gradient of ut at the point dot psi and then you have divergence of psi which is n so minus n times uh, it will remain unchanged ut and psi okay so is this clear so essentially what am i doing i am doing divergence of uh, uvw is uh, uv divergence of w uh, plus you understand right mm, plus um, v uh, w divergence of u plus uh, and it goes on like that right? so basically this is the uh, leibniz rule this is what i am using here okay okay once i do that then what do i get uh, then i get something like this so this uh, okay this part is let me write it like this so minus 4n by r power n plus 1 okay integral uh, xi eta in e 0 0 r okay mm, xi uh, phi of xi eta okay uh, ut at the point x plus xi t plus tau okay just take a minute and think of why all of this is coming here xi tau in e 0 0 r okay phi of xi tau dot d d tau of i will explain why all of this is coming here x plus xi t plus tau uh, dot uh, what is it this i am doing so this is dot xi okay okay fine yeah okay so let me explain to you how all of this is coming what happens to this divergence of this particular thing this see divergence this is this is a region which is a smooth region divergence of this function let's take this function as some function phi so divergence of phi on this thing by divergence formula greens di cause divergence formula this is equals to um, this function times eta on the boundary right this functions times eta on the boundary yeah on the boundary daily yeah and what happens um, to phi on daily okay cv this is true since phi restricted to del e 0 0 0 r is 0 that's a beautiful property daily of 0 0 r that is equals to 0 okay see phi is defined like that actually this, that's definitely going to be true you know, phi is defined like that phi this side sorry phi not phi psi the, or 
fee. I mean, calling this fee, right? Yeah. So fee is defined like that. So you see, fee. If you if you want, you can just check it yourself. Fee is essentially going to be zero on the boundary of uh, the ball E zero zero R. Okay. So please check that part. This is fee. Where is it? Uh, yeah. So please check this. Yeah. Uh, check. If you are not convinced, please check this part. So since phi is zero here, uh, from Gauss divergence, what do you have? See, uh, let me write it here. From Gauss divergence theorem, okay. Uh, what do I have? Yeah, divergence of integral over omega, divergence of uh, u, let's say, yeah, or gradient u. I mean, what do you want to call it? Whatever. Yeah, divergence of gradient u. Let's say, yeah, that is. A divergence of some some vector field, yeah, not gradient. You let's just do it for a grid. Divergence of a vector field, let's say uh, something um, u. Let's call it a u. This is equals to on the boundary u dot um, gamma ds. Gamma is the unit outward normal, right? So that's the Gauss divergence theorem. So you see here, uh, divergence of this particular thing is basically uh, this is your u here, huh? The, the thing and that u on the boundary this psi is on the boundary is zero so that is why this particular term is gone now i am just left out with this term okay and uh, how am i getting um, all of this uh, so first thing first minus 4n by this thing is this term this particular term is this term i am just writing it like this yeah minus 4n by r power n plus 1 and this whole thing i am just writing it down i am not doing anything else huh? this particular term i am just writing it in this way are you convinced that this is true of course this is true yeah why is this true because i mean you can change you can just take the derivative here right and if you if you take the derivative here d with respect to tau uh, the first uh, by chain rule the first term is not going to be there from in the second term it will be there so the if you use chain rule here uh, of course uh, it will be gradient of u uh, t at the point t plus tau uh, sorry x plus xi t plus tau and then uh, this xi is there so that xi is there okay so this is just a chain rule from here to here from uh, okay how do i put it this one this particular thing to here okay so this is the chain rule chain rule okay so i'm sorry for uh, see these are big calculations okay so i'm sorry if there is a little mess here so please uh, bear with me okay now uh, i have this pro thing now i want to look at uh, what am i doing here this function this uh, thing is here and that is here okay now we consider this second expression this expression okay uh, so let's say this is uh, c plus d so i will consider this last expression okay so considering considering this expression integral xi eta in e 0 0 r i am writing this all the time here uh, this is phi of mm, xi eta times del del tau of du at the point x plus xi t plus tau dot xi clear so this particular thing uh, this, this term i am considering the second term in this uh, or the middle term of this expression okay so this term I am considering. So this term uh, by uh, I mean you can use the integration bypass formula right. Uh, here I am using integration bypass formula. So that will give me minus integral um, okay. Hey man I am not writing this thing yeah that is so that, that is there xi eta is in e I am writing it too many times. Huh? So, uh, it's assumed that xi eta is in E00 R for now, okay. So, uh, if that is the uh, case, it will become xi tau. With the, so, I am taking the derivative on the other part, indication by parts. Derivative is getting transferred here, okay. Xi tau at the point, uh, phi, phi tau at the point xi eta and uh, then you have uh, du at x plus xi t plus tau 
okay uh, dot psi that thing is there so this is the term okay let me write it it is better otherwise you may get confused here e 0 0 r and there is a boundary term okay plus boundary boundary of e and this term will be evaluated without the del del tau xi times gradient of u on the boundary and on the boundary xi is zero so this particular term is zero okay not there clear so uh, this uh, the second expression is equals to minus of this particular term okay and this term so this a uh, small calculation has to be done uh, maybe i can skip the calculations here see phi is given to you you guys already know what phi is so you can calculate phi tau okay so please check this part yourself i'm just going to skip this part and i'm going to write it like this so phi so this is equals to minus integral uh, xi tau in e uh, 0 0 r okay and uh, minus n by 2 r minus mod xi square by uh, 4 tau square okay and then you have gradient of u x plus xi t plus tau uh, dot xi clear so that is there so how am i getting this i'm just taking the derivative of xi with respect to tau phi derivative of phi with respect to uh, tau okay and then um, i get this so please check this part Again, this is not very difficult to check. I mean, this is uh, usual stuff. Okay. Now, now we take this expression. Now we take this expression and this expression, we just wrote it like that, right? So, uh, I'm just rearranging all the expressions. Okay. So, if I rearrange all that, so rearranging, rearranging all the expressions okay what do we have i have phi prime of r okay uh, so is equals to minus 4n by r power n plus 1 okay integral again i am not writing it is e 0 0 r huh? phi of xi eta ut of x plus xi t plus tau minus 2n by r power n plus 1 uh, integral uh, that part what was there this one right gradient of u at x plus xi t plus tau dot xi by tau okay so this is equals to this i'm just rearranging this thing and writing it down i'm not doing anything yeah mm, special so this is equals to minus 4n by r power n plus 1 okay uh, again integration by parts I'm, i will just do integration by parts ut okay am i doing it correctly one second huh? let me just check mm, this part is there yeah this is fine yeah so yeah okay so this is integral huh? minus sign i won't need because i'm using integration by parts here derivative will go here so the minus sign is getting cancelled and then i have psi t at the point phi t at the point psi and uh, eta okay and then you have uh, u at the point so it is becoming gradient of u at the point x plus xi t plus tau okay and uh, minus 2n by r power n plus 1 okay and this integral uh, it is becoming gradient of x plus xi t plus tau dot xi by tau fine yes i think this is fine i am not making any mistakes anywhere yeah. uh, i think it is fine yes this is fine now uh, one second let me just check uh, yes 
वॉट इज यू जाई टी जाई टी सॉरी फाई टी फाई टी इज हाँ ग्रेडियंट ऑफ फाई इज जाई बाई टू टाउ ग्रेडियंट ऑफ फाई इज जाई बाई टू टाउ सो सॉरी दिस इज ग्रेडियंट दिस इज ग्रेडियंट ऑफ फाई दिस इज नॉट ओनली विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू टी बट दिस इज ग्रेडियंट ऑफ फाई ग्रेडियंट ऑफ फाई एट द पॉइंट जाउट आई हाँ देर वॉज अ मिस्टेक हेयर है सो प्लीज चेक दिस पार्ट सो अगेन चेक दिस पार्ट ओके सो फ्रॉम हेयर टू हेयर प्लीज चेक दिस पार्ट ओके सो वंस आई हैव दिस देन आई कैन राइट इट लाइक दिस दैट हाँ नाउ आई एम मिसिंग समथिंग नो आई एम नॉट मिसिंग एनी थिंग वॉट इज ग्रेडियंट ऑफ हाँ या ओके या ग्रेडियंट ऑफ साई दैट्स वॉट वी कैलकुलेटेड सम वर्ड नो वट इज हाँ ग्रेडियंट ऑफ साई इज जाई बाई टू टाउ ओके सो यू जस्ट पुट जाई बाई टू टाउ हेयर यू सी जाई बाई टू टाउ सो जाई बाई टाउ एंड टू बाई टू टाउ इज देयर सो इट विल बिकम टू एन बाई आर पावर एन माइनस वन सो माइनस टू एन बाई आर टू दिवर एन प्लस वन एंड दिस टर्म एंड दिस टर्म विल गेट कैंसल आउट सो दिस विल बिकम जीरो ओके सो दिस विल बिकम जीरो सो हेन्स देयर फॉर व्हाट इट मीन्स इट मीन्स दैट फी ऑफ आर इज कॉन्स्टेंट ओके दैट्स वॉट सो सो मच एफर्ट इज रिक्वायर्ड टू प्रूव दिस एंड वी एट लास्ट प्रूव दैट फी इज कॉन्स्टेंट ओके सो विथ दैट मच एफर्ट वी हैव प्रूव दैट फी इज कॉन्स्टेंट सो फी प्राइम इज जीरो फी इज कॉन्स्टेंट ओके एंड देयर फोर देयर फोर फी ऑफ आर दिस इज of course limit r tends to zero because phi is con- uh, a continuous function right and u of mm, x plus r xi uh, t plus r square tau okay mod xi square by r square okay this is equals to if you mm, just take the mm, i mean th- this is in e 0 0 r sorry 1 i am taking the um, r here so 1 on this limit r tends to zero uh, if you just push it inside yeah you can actually show that since uh, uh, the u has a continuous uh, property it it will look like this u of xt and this is e 0 0 1 mod xi square by r square okay sorry not r square tau square okay dzi d tau that is their uh, i have skipped all that z i d tau part here so that is there yeah now here uh, it is still not done yes and i am going to take a liberty here and i am going to um, i mean assume that this particular thing uh, you know this mod z square by mod tau square this this thing hmm, is nothing but one uh, this is 4 r power n is this clear okay uh, so i really feel bad about it but uh, let's just uh, stick with this so this is um, this is a lemma hmm? due to um, I, if i recall fuchs okay so this is u of xt is it clear this integral i am not calculating this integral okay but uh, i mean uh, this goes way back to 1961 or something there is a paper by fuchs where he has proved this property okay this is uh, not a very easy thing to prove so i am going to assume this okay so with this we are going to end this lecture so we have proved what we wanted thank you very much